Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Cohe, Technical Evangelist for Autodesk Manufacturing, and I have bad posture. Clearly, I'm bending over here. Um, but uh, I've been checking out my uh, channel, some of the comments posted on the channel, and got a request from a, uh, I don't know if you can read that or not, but it's uh, Catter810, and he says, <clears throat> Hey Rob, uh, you need to bring it down for us noobs, dude. Uh, we need you to help us get as good and as fast like you per se. You leave me in the dust, uh, but I love your stuff. So uh, thanks, Catter810, for the suggestion. Uh, some of the emails I get through the YouTube channel are, you know, kind of of the same uh, type of request. Hey, can you can you show us some of the fundamental stuff, the things that you kind of just take for granted that 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 you know, and you just kind of click on through it in some of your demos. So this one is all about uh, work planes and working with work planes and really just, just the fundamentals of creating planes in some areas that you may not know or some, some best practices as to doing tangent work planes, offset work planes, through a point, on a spline, normal to uh, normal to an edge, those types of things. So uh, check it out, let me know what you think, and uh, keep the suggestions coming. I'm always looking for new material. This isn't a geometry demonstration. This is this is how to work with work planes. So by, by utilizing the origin work planes, um, I now have all of my bisecting work planes. Right? Uh, I did a, a symmetric extrude from the center, and now all of these work planes can be used um, for specific purposes. I don't have to create a new one to do a bisecting work plane uh, through this part. I just use that existing origin plane as my sketch. Uh, as my sketch plane so that I can do what I need to do. All right, then of course I'm going to go ahead and, and use uh, some project cut edges so that I can sketch out the profile that I'm going to uh, to do here. Now you saw I did a, a select all and converted that into into construction lines and the reason for that if you use construction lines versus normal uh, sketch objects, Inventor will ignore those when it goes to performing the revolve cut um, that I wanted to do. So I'm also going to use the origin axis to project down a center line so that the revolve feature knows where to revolve around. Um, so I'll go ahead and choose revolve, change that to a cut, and go ahead and execute the command. Okay, no big deal. I haven't, I haven't made any new work planes yet, but you can see I'm utilizing all the origin planes and the origin axes so that you don't have to create ones where it's unnecessary. Now here, I'm going to go ahead and create a tangent work plane. Now, I've seen many users create an offset work plane and type in the distance that is the uh, radius, if you will, um, in this particular example of the... Uh, of the circle. Now that's fine. It's just you know there's some extra clicks there and, and all that. Um, but uh, you know if, if if it's a static dimension and not actually referenced to the dimension that's driving the radius, you could have some problems down the road. So let's go ahead and uh, I don't know place a hole on the end of this, and I want to position it relative to the end. So I'll project some geometry. I'll place my my center mark and and just a quick dimension here. And I'll go ahead and choose done. Finish the sketch, and now I have a work point that is tangent to the outside of this cylinder that I'm going to place a hole on. Um, and I'm not going to go into the hole command. You guys have, have, have seen me do that plenty of times. Um, but I'm just going to blast a hole through this so that I can move on to the next example of, uh, of a work plane. Okay, so that was doing a tangent off, off uh, a tangent work plane, rather not, not an offset work plane. Alright, so the next work plane uh, that we're going to do Let's go ahead and fire up the work plane. Now notice the, uh, the the help command. If you float your cursor over those, uh, in, in 2011, the uh, uh, um, the help comes up and, and, and uh, gives you a nice little preview, as to, a nice description as to what's going on. This one, what I want to do is I want a tangent work plane at a specific angle. But I need to first do the angle from the origin. So I'll say create a work plane, measure from uh, one of the origin planes, rotate through one of the axes, and now I have the angle that I want. Now I'll go ahead and do my tangent plane. So now that tangent plane is parallel to my angled plane, so that I, I, I now have that, you know, it's at, it's at 30 degrees or, or, or whatever it was there. Let's go in and uh, check out the parameters here to see exactly what that was. Yeah, it, so it was at 30 degrees, um, from, from zero here and you go through here and say there's 35 
uh, tab on out and you can see it update. So um, what I'm driving is the angle of the first plane that I did. And then by making this tangent work plane parallel to my angled work plane, it always maintains that angle. Now additionally, since I created a tangent work plane, I go and change the diameter of the cylinder. And you can see that, that um, the tangent work plane maintains a tangent relationship. And I didn't have to place an offset dimension for it to maintain that relationship. So uh, hopefully you're, you're seeing the difference there. Now additionally in 2011 we put these uh, um, these selection filters into our work plane creation. So what I did was I said I'm going to do specifically a, um, a a plane bisecting between two faces. So that's all that the cursor was looking for. That doesn't mean that you have to go through and use the selection. You can still perform the same uh, command. Um, it's just by using those uh, that pull down. It's you're telling Inventor specifically. Um, to pick on these types of objects. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and do probably the most commonly used uh, uh, work plane is just an offset work plane. So I'll pick the plane that I want to be parallel to and simply drag the cursor in the direction that I want to offset. I'll go ahead and type the distance and now I have a one and a half inch offset from center uh, work plane. So now I can use that work plane when I want to create, I don't know, some geometry that's going to extrude down to uh, the, the first face that it hits basically creating a, a little T intersection on this uh, completely made up and uh, useless part <laughs> other than you know the use that I'm, I'm doing here showing you some functionality so I'll just say um, you know just extrude down to the next face and hit OK so now what what happens is um, that little offset T is 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 if I change the the offset dimension that profile will will follow with it and always um, move forward. I, you know, put a fillet in there for no particular reason other than it you know looks cool, I guess. <laughs> All right. So um, next thing I want to do is I'm gonna I'm gonna create a little profile here. I'm gonna do a sweep. Um, and there there's you know. Obviously, lots of ways to do this, but um, you know, just kind of kind of watch these these techniques that I'm going to use. Again, uh, a big fan of construction line when the, when the, the geometry um, has no bearing on either path or profile. So here, I'm just doing a spline, and 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 what I want to do is on the end of this spline, I'm going to draw a circle, and I'm going to use that spline to the path to have it meet up with uh, this solid body. Now, I want that uh, um, my my uh, my profile to kind of come tangent to the end of this so what I did was I drew, drew a line there um, and said uh, I want the uh, I want the spline to be tangent to that uh, that line that I just sketched and now here's 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 the here's the rub I'm gonna go ahead and create a work plane and that work plane needs to be tangent or, or normal rather to the end of that spline and what I did was I clicked work plane I clicked the line and then clicked one of those control points and that automatically um, puts that uh, that work plane now normal to that spline and you can do this on any one of those control points and you can also place points along that spline specifically uh, if you if, like for example let's say we're doing a uh, um, a loft along that spline I need to set up multiple profiles well that's the the technique that you would use to create those work planes is click uh, click the work plane um, select the spline and then click the control points or the place sketch points and you will now have a, um, a work plane that's normal to that so one of the things about construction lines you can see right there uh, I switched that from a normal line to a construction line and take a look at that um, the sweep command now ignores that as part of the profile pretty pretty handy little tip there okay so just I want to point out how uh, how that work plane uh, maintains a normalcy um, to the uh, to the endpoint there so let's just go ahead and edit that uh, that spline drag it down here and obviously the position uh, of that work plane needs to automatically adjust and it maintains that associativity so like I said this one's kind of a you know just a just a general here are some of the work planes that I use a lot of and, and, and ways in which you can go about doing them hopefully it was beneficial uh, keep the feedback coming and we'll keep uh, making the videos we'll see you on the flip side